Kick Dabby, and I am super late with this video, but about two weeks ago was Book Expo and BookCon. I couldn't make it to Book Expo, but I did get a chance to go to BookCon, and I took some videos and some pictures, so today I'm going to talk about my experience. I was lucky enough to have a press pass at BookCon this year. I was there representing the fandom.net. If you have not checked out their site, please do so. I will have some links below to some information that I have on their site from my time at BookCon, and I'll talk about more about that as I go through. So thanks to Kate and Natasha at the fandom.net, I got to start out my weekend with five interviews with some of the authors from Penguin, and I got the Game Changer set. First of all, we got there and we all got these little goodie bags, and I love it. And inside were some of the coolest things ever. The first thing inside was the Game Changer set, and I will talk about exactly what books are in here in a moment, because I got to interview the authors of all five of these books, and it was awesome, and you'll see those in a moment. Also in here were a couple pins that say, we are what you read, Penguin Teen. And the greatest gift ever to go in a bag right before a convention, a portable charger. Everybody should give out portable chargers at conventions. It's genius. It's just what I needed. I was so excited. I think that ended up in a different bag because I was using it throughout the convention, but you'll see it in a moment. I ended up with two of them. Two of them. Anyway, I'm going to get into the books that I had a chance to get arcs for and talk about at that event. First was Warcross by Marie Lu, and I'm gonna let her tell you what that was about. Warcross is very near future science fiction, so it's about 10 years into our future. Like, that's how I'm seeing it. Uh, and it's about this girl named Amika Chen, who is 18 years old and living in New York City on her own. And she's kind of struggling to get by. Um, she works as a bounty hunter. Uh, and what her, what her job entails is that she goes out and catches people who are gambling illegally on a game called Warcross, uh, which is a game that's kind of taken the world by storm. Like, everybody plays this game. They're obsessed with it. Um, and so that's her job. But it's not like a steady pay or anything. She has to, like, she only gets paid if she actually manages to hunt someone down. So she's struggling to get by and, you know, about to get kicked out of her apartment and kind of down on her luck. Um, when one day she gets a call from the mysterious young billionaire who created this game. Um, his name is Hideo Tanaka, and he is 21 years old, like this genius that created everything. Um, and she accidentally does something that catches his eye. So he calls her out of the blue one day and is just like, I have a job for you. Um, so suddenly her life is turned upside down and she is whisked away to Tokyo um, to participate in um, things that are related to Warcross and like the, the huge, huge cult following that Warcross has and um, gets swept away in all of the stuff that goes along with it. So it's a little bit thriller, a little bit mystery, and I just wanted to have a lot of fun with the story. I love everything by Marie Lu, so I am super excited to actually read this book. Next, I got Jane Unlimited by Kristen Cashor, which sounds so cool. Again, I'll let her tell you what this book is about. So there's this young woman who comes to this like house of mystery, and she's an orphan, and, and she feels like things, there's something weird going on in this house. Like she, There are people there who are making references to her past, and they've never even met her before, or just people who are acting strangely. And at a certain point, she has to make a choice of who to follow, and then the book splits off into five stories, and that like simultaneously occurring stories, and each story is in a different genre. So um, if she goes one way, she ends up in a mystery, another way a spy story, another way a horror story, another way a fantasy, and another way a spy It sounds so cool. I'm so excited to read this with all the different genres put together. Next in here was just a partial arc but I'm still really excited for it. It is There's Someone Inside Your House by Stephanie Perkins. If you know anything about me, I am obsessed with Anne and the French Kiss and that series, and I was just so excited 
Stephanie Perkins was like one of only three authors that I've been obsessed with for several years that I've never met. So I was so excited to see her. I got a picture with her and I'll let her tell you about the book. It's basically about a girl who lives in rural Nebraska who's from, um, she's lived there about a year, she's from Hawaii. She feels very out of place there. I like writing about people who feel out of place. That was kind of my whole teenage existence. And, um, and uh, you know, she, she and her friends are just looking forward to graduation. They're seniors, they're ready to go, they're ready to move on to their life and get out of this very small town. And then a serial killer shows up. <laughs> So um, there's there's a little bit of a love story. Um, there's there's a very high body count. It's it's I would say just it's a very traditional movie. It's very much cinematically influenced as opposed to literary influenced. I always tell people it's like Anne and the French Kiss with murder. Yeah. Like there's still a love interest. There's still like my kind of dialogue. It feels yes. like my kind of characters. There's just a high body count on the <laughs> yes. This one sounds so. Cool. I'm kind of sad that I don't have the whole thing, but I will when it actually comes out in September. The fourth book I picked up at this event was Things I'm Seeing Without You by Peter Gnani. And again, I'll let him tell you what this is about. So this um, is a, it, uh, a realist book. It's both. It's supposed to be both um, kind of quirky and funny, but also kind of heartbreaking um, in equal measure. You might, you might cry if you're capable of feeling human emotions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so the basic story is that there's a, um, a teenage girl who has been in an online relationship with someone she only met once in person. Uh, that person commits suicide and right when she's starting to grieve for him, she gets a message from his account. Um, and I won't tell you what happens next. Uh, and but the other the other part of it is is that she comes home uh, she drops out of school and she comes home to be with her dad while she's going through this and he runs um, a funeral business that specializes in like strange out of the ordinary funerals like you can have your ashes turned into fireworks and like exploded in the sky or like so um, so while she's going through this she's helping her dad she starts to help him with his business to try to like plan the funerals and like get over and figure out her own kind of like grief and the mystery of what's going on while that's happening. We got to have a very interesting conversation and I'm excited for you to see that and once again I'm really excited to read this book. The final book I got at this event was Forest of a Thousand Lanterns by Julie E. Dow and once again I'll let her tell you what it was about. I've always been interested in villains, like bad guys. Where do they come from? Are they born bad? Um, what what flips the switch, you know? Especially the evil queen from Snow White. She's so over the top. Like, she eats people's hearts. Um, she's got this crazy magic mirror. She poisons people with apples. Like, how do you go from being a kid to growing up into that? So I wanted to explore that and see if I could challenge myself to write a logical progression where she escalates into that and then convince all of you guys too, as well. Like, oh, okay, this is kind of believable. Like, these are the choices that she made. This is where she came from. So that's that's what I was hoping. It's set in Asia. There's not a single white person in this book. It's all Asian people. Right. Um, and she's the lead character. And I just felt like, you know, there needs to be something out there for Asian readers to see themselves too, because we're important and we can be heroes as well. So I feel like that, that sets Forrest yes. apart a little bit because it's been so hard to find diverse fantasies. It's so, so hard. It's, you know, it shouldn't be that hard. But yes. I feel like things are getting better. Much, much better. This, I think, is the book that I had not already read the author of that I'm most excited about. And I just, I can't wait to get into this. It's a fairy tale retelling from the villain's point of view, which I've been reading a lot of, not all from the villain's point of view, but some, and it's interesting, and I'm excited to see where it goes. So from that event, I went to actual BookCon, and I got to go to some panels, and see some really cool stuff. I took some awesome pictures, which I will bring up now.
So first day of book hunt is over. I interviewed some authors, almost lost my tripod. Actually, I did lose it, but then I got it back. I went to a bunch of panels. I didn't really get a lot of autographs because I'm pressed, but I will survive. And I had a lot of fun. I got to talk about books with some awesome people and I'm exhausted and I'm excited to do more tomorrow. Bye. Also at day one of book hunt, I picked up my first in line pack. Came with this awesome tote, this awesome tote. It has a towel, which is another genius thing to have at a convention because I wrapped my posters in them and it kept them nice and firm and awesome. It also had a nice little pouch in there. And of course, some arts in here was another portable charger. Genius, I tell you, genius. Here's my portable charger. This is actually the one that came in the first pouch, but I, it ended up in this one, but that's okay. I was using both of them throughout the convention. I got an underline pen, a bookmark, a brand new copy of His Dark Materials book one, which they're making a new book for, so they're re-giving these out, I guess, again. And there's like a little note or something that I read, but I don't remember. I actually haven't read the series yet, guys. My brother actually gave it to me to hold on to and read, but I haven't read it yet. Shh. And Dear Martin, which I have heard such wonderful things about, and I'm so excited to read this one. I've been dying for these types of books recently. And then I also picked up Expelled by James Patterson and Emily Raymond. This is one that I just happened to walk up and there were books sitting there. And I'm like, hey, can I have one? And they're like, sure, let me just scan your badge. And I'm like, okay. And then I got this book and it sounds kind of cool. I'll talk more about it in my June wrap up. So that was day one. Now, on to day two. Hey guys, heading to day two of BookCon. I'm on my way to the bus where I will be going into the city and I'm wearing an awesome shirt. What what? I'm interviewing Scott Westerfeld first thing in the morning and then I'm gonna have some fun. Well not that that won't be fun because it will but it's gonna be an awesome day. Bye! First thing I did was I interviewed Scott Westerfeld with his new graphic novel, Spill Zone, which I will let him tell you about. So Spill Zone is my new graphic novel, and it's, um, it's about a young woman named Addison Merritt who, um, whose hometown and family was destroyed by a strange event that happened about three years before the story starts. Basically, she lives in a small town in upstate New York called Poughkeepsie, and Poughkeepsie was completely destroyed by this, um, by this event called a spill. And nobody really knows what a spill was, whether it was aliens coming down, or a nanotech accident, or Cthulhu spilling from another world. It just basically one night the laws of physics went crazy. The, um, you know, people, lots of people died. The, you know, the, the town itself was upended and is fully a strange phenomenon now. Um, these days, the, the town is completely walled off. Uh, National Guardsmen patrol it. No one's allowed in. Technology doesn't work in there as well, so it's hard for, to send in drones or anything like that. Right. So um, she lives outside the zone with her little sister, who's one of the few people who escaped the event. Um, Addison herself uh, escaped because she didn't, uh, she wasn't there, you know, she wasn't home that night. Mm -hmm. And her little sister is one of the, this group of little kids who escaped by, uh, and no one knows how they got out quite, because they, um, because none of them have spoken since. Uh, so like as I said, that she lives just outside with her silent little sister, and she sneaks into the zone at night, and um, using her sort of local knowledge and the fact that the, old, the National Guardsmen are old friends of hers, and she um, takes photographs of what's going on inside the zone. Um, she started out doing this like, to, try, to try to figure out what happened. Right. But these days, uh, she has found this group of collectors who are fascinated by the zone. And, and so she sort of has become an outlaw artist. She mm -hmm. sells these sort of single edition prints of her photographs as a kind of an illegal art. And, um, and that's how she supports herself and her sister. And I have to say, right before I did that interview, I walked in and all of the like most famous, biggest, popularist 
popularest. Most popular booktubers were sitting in that room. So I was a little bit starstruck because like I was expecting to see Scott Westerfeld, so I was prepared for that. But I walk in and there's Christine and Kat and Jesse the Reader and Natasha and Sasha and Zoe, everybody. Everybody. And they're just sitting there hanging out. And then they end up going and taking a picture right behind me as they're on their way out for, I guess it was the book to meet up or something. And Christine actually like tripped over my chair a little bit and turned around and said sorry. And I'm just like, ah, it's okay. And then I watched her uh, book expo video and she like circled around the group taking a video and I'm in her video for like a split second and I took a screenshot of it and here it is. But anyway, after that I tried to get into the Epic Reads meetup and I was hoping that there would be some freebies there but there weren't and I didn't have any books for the people there to sign because I already have all of my books signed by all of those authors from Y'all Fest. So I left that and jumped into the Zenith line because I found out that only like 20 more people could join that line to get Zenith and this was like three hours before the book was being released. But anyway, in that line, I got this nifty bag. Zenith! It's signed too. Unfortunately, I did not get Wonder Woman, which I really wanted. I wanted that, and I wanted the new Jennifer Armentrout book, but because I was doing the interviews in the morning on Saturday, I was, like, late getting in there, and even though I went straight to the Jennifer Armentrout line, I was too late. I joined with a group of girls. Shout out to those girls if they're watching. And we created our own little group in the Zenith line so that one person could kind of hold down the fort and the others could circle around at different times. So I got to go see a couple, another panel. <laughs> to my friend's place from day two of BookCon and I'm exhausted. Um, I didn't do pretty much any of the stuff I most wanted to do but I got Zenith which is awesome and I got a whole bunch of other books that I don't know much about but I have them now so yeah I will talk more about it later. Bye! Whew. I got Select an Enchantment of Ravens, Start Without Me, The Rules of Love and Grammar, and Little and Lion. I will talk more about these in my June wrap-up where I will actually look at what they're about and talk about it more. Uh, that was it. I want to say thanks to my friend Ariel for letting me stay with her for the weekend. And I want to say sorry to my friend Gabby, who I was supposed to see but I didn't get a chance to. And hi to my friends Kate and Flo, who I've seen at these types of events before, but they couldn't make it this year. And my other friend Kate, who I was supposed to stay with, but I couldn't. <sighs> I missed out on a lot this year. Anyway, that is it. Stay tuned for my June wrap-up to hear more about all of these books and some other things from this month. Oh my goodness, Dobby. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this video. There will be links below to all of the interviews I did. And check out thefandom.net. Alright? Bye! Hey, Ellie and Dobby here. Like the video? Come subscribe. Do it right now. Click it.